Hey everyone, Doug here with B&H, and it's time to talk about my favorite topic, computer hardware. Specifically, we're gonna take a look at Intel's latest 11th generation core processor line, along with a motherboard and graphics card from Gigabyte to see what's possible for gamers and creators demanding the latest in high performance. We won't actually get into the build process here too much, but we are gonna talk about part selection, why users might want those parts, and what other considerations they should have based on their use case. Oh, and not only are we building a computer, but we're giving one away. Let's begin. We'll be looking at the top end Core i9-11900K. This unlocked eight core, 16 thread CPU can hit an all core boost clock of 4.8 gigahertz and single thread clocks of up to 5.3 gigahertz. Going down the desktop lineup, there are i7 and i5 models as well, including the i7-11700K and the i5-11600K. And while we'll be looking at the i9 today, they all share most of the same new features in the 11th generation platform. That includes official DDR4-3200 support for one, but professionals will also appreciate the Thunderbolt 4 support, which can reach 40 gigabits a second speeds and the Intel UHD 750 graphics on board here that provide new hardware encoding and decoding modes. We'll take a look at that in a bit though. There's also a deep learning boost which is intended to accelerate AI applications. So what are we going to pair with our lovely i9? For this build, we'll be leaning on the Gigabyte Z590 Aorus Pro AX motherboard. You can guess by the name that we're using the new Enthusiast Z590 chipset here, meaning the 11th gen now has access to 20 PCIe 4.0 lanes. This means you should have plenty of bandwidth for both high-end GPUs and multiple NVMe solid-state drives. Power delivery and thermal regulation is featured prominently on this board. You can see it everywhere, from the fully load-balanced VRM layout near the CPU, but also in the thermal pads and shielding that surround each M2 slot. Those who like to gland their computers out will like that there's ample support for addressable LEDs here. We're keeping it simple here, but go ahead, add as much RGB lighting as you like. Other features to note include a wealth of USB 3.2 Gen 2x2, giving you up to 20 gigabit a second transfer speeds, a 2.5 gigabit ethernet connection, providing faster local networking, and built-in Intel Wi-Fi AX and Bluetooth support. It's been interesting to see how motherboards have shifted their expansion needs over the years. Wait, decades. Oh my. And with the extensive M2 shielding, there's really only room for three PCI slots. The good news though is that every slot here is a 16x slot, so you have the flexibility to add pretty much any card you please. Moving on to this build's other components though, if the four M2 slots in here don't tell you that solid state is the future, I don't know what will. We're using a 500 gigabyte Samsung 980 Pro NVMe SSD here as our primary storage, but of course there's room for so much more. We've installed 16 gigabytes of Crucial Ballistics DDR4 RAM. Now, as I said before, the 11th gen Intel processors now officially support DDR4-3200 RAM. Though this particular set can reach up to 3600, so we'll have to set that up in the motherboard later on. Everything's powered by the Cooler Master MWE Gold 750 watt power supply. Being a modular power supply, of course, it keeps the cabling tidy, which we all love, and provides enough juice and cables for multiple ATX 12 volt connections and PCIe power. Our cooler of choice here is the Noctua NHD15S in a single fan arrangement. Installation was pretty easy actually with no RAM clearance issues. For a performance CPU like this i9, which by the way, doesn't ship with the cooler, you'll want a high-end cooling solution. Fortunately, as we'll see later, the Noctua handles it perfectly. To help out a bit though, we've also thrown in three Be Quiet Pure Wings 2 fans. Now for the graphics card, we've gone big, literally. We've got this massive NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080 in the form of Gigabyte's Gaming OC 10G card. Someone's gonna have fun with this thing. With 10 gigabytes of GDDR6X and 8704 CUDA cores, this GPU is excellent for both gaming and media creation. You'll need specs like this to edit and grade 4K video, or of course, game at the highest frame rates and resolutions possible. We'll show off some eye candy later. So what's containing this build? We've used the Fractal Design Meshify C case. 
This particular version has a tempered glass view, letting you get a glimpse of everything inside. If you're big on lighting, why not? More importantly though, it's another case that truly represents where things are going in terms of storage, as there's very little space here for a traditional hard drive. That's actually perfect for our needs because as you can see, the GPU takes up pretty much the entire length of the case. Luckily, we were able to arrange our case fans around it. I've given the computer a kind of test spin. This kind of setup is more than capable as both a high-end gaming PC and with some additional storage as a video, photo, or music production workstation. Exciting. So what I'm gonna do is show you a few hard numbers on the productivity end, and then a glimpse of the kind of gaming experience you can get on hardware like this. First, let's look at an old standby, Prime 95. This is a synthetic test, but it pushes the CPU hard. If you really wanna test system stability, especially when you're overclocking, it's a good tool to keep on hand. In a 20 minute stress test, we pushed all 16 threads to the max. The CPU immediately hit 100% utilization and all core clocks hit 4.8 gigahertz, at least for the first five minutes. After about 10 minutes, that dropped to 4.7 gigahertz and temperatures leveled out at about 80 to 82 Celsius. Now, this is pretty hot, but the Noctua cooler we installed kept on top of it, reaching almost 1500 RPM. It's important to keep in mind though that this is not a real world test. Consider this a look at system stability and thermal performance. We'll leave it at that. That of course brings us to video encoding tests, which I personally find to be excellent real world tests, especially for, well, video work. I did three different tests here in order to judge effective speeds in single core, multi-core, and hardware accelerated situations. The first encoding test is a simple ProRes 422HQ export from a recent Adobe Premiere project we just finished. It's a realistic example as it includes 4K video, multiple color grading effects, extremely high resolution still images that we move around, motion graphics, and it runs nearly 15 minutes in length. Creating a high quality mezzanine file is standard procedure for any video, and for the most part, it's a software driven process. ProRes exports are pretty straightforward. We'll make sure to render at maximum bit depth here and at 16 bits per channel. Once the encode kicks off, I monitored temps and CPU usage to see how effectively the export threaded. The majority of the time, CPU usage hovers around 23 to 27%, so not much. Though when motion graphics kick in, it often hits around 46%, as this also involves the After Effects rendering engine. CPU boosts hit 4.8 to 4.9 gigahertz, and it's sustained since the CPU usage remains mostly low. As a result, temperatures by the end hovered right below 60 C, which is fantastic. This 15 minute 4K video took one hour and three minutes to render. Now, to be fair, project rendering isn't always a great benchmark though, because there's a mix of processes going on in the background. Some things are hardware accelerated, some are not. The codex, of course, may not thread as well, and drive throughput can be an issue, and that is especially relevant here as we are rendering off of a USB-C hard drive. So to get a better idea of both CPU utilization and speeds, I took that very exported ProRes file and put it through Handbrake, which is a free video encoding program. The X264 encoder in particular can easily max out pretty much any number of threads you throw at it, and it's a good test for anyone looking to export high quality video files. I set it up with the very slow preset, downscaled the video to 1080p during the export, and fired it off. Immediately, the CPU was pushed to 100% utilization across all 16 threads, with boost clock sitting around 4.7 gigahertz. The Noctua fan gets a workout here again, but manages to keep CPU temps hovering between 72 to 75 C. Higher than before, yes, but still acceptable, especially given the demand. The best part though is the performance. The very slow preset truly lives up to its name most of the time, and remember, this is only a 1080p encode. Yet, the i9 managed to churn it out in near real time at an average of 23 FPS. The video finished in 15 minutes, 26 seconds, less than a minute more than its runtime. Software encoding is of course just one way to do things though. 4K video is usually exported in HEVC format these days, which is becoming increasingly necessary. Now, while you can directly export this out of your editor, we are again going to use Handbrake to limit the process to encoding as much as possible. 
This time though, we're going to use Intel QuickSync to do it, which is actually part of the onboard Intel UHD 750 graphics. This provides both encoding and decoding of numerous codecs, including HEVC. Anyway, what we're gonna do is a 4K 10-bit HEVC encode at 30 megabits. If this were CPU-based, it would be painfully slow. But thanks to the wonders of hardware acceleration, we gain a few benefits. Let's take a look. As the encode moves along, notice that the CPU is barely utilized. It's pretty much only decoding the source video and encoding the audio track alongside, but otherwise, it's not doing that much. Naturally, temperatures remain low, but if we scroll down a bit, we can see the Intel UHD graphics being pinged at 100% utilization. The QuickSync encoder provides a fantastic 28 FPS average and finish the same 15 minute video in 12 minutes, 43 seconds. Having this option, of course, also frees up the CPU for things like gaming, or in the case of a more complicated project, allows the CPU to perform the software driven tasks. This is huge for live streaming, gaming, and screen capture. So when it comes to games, I must confess, we aren't equipped to do extensive frame pacing tests or settings tweaks to get our frame rates perfectly stable. But what we are gonna do is show you some gameplay on maxed out settings, leveraging some of the more recent features you can get on the Nvidia hardware we're using. We're going to run everything at 4K 60 FPS in HDR with G-Sync enabled. It's a brave new world. This is a big screen, which means I'm ditching the keyboard and mouse and going straight for my controller. Let's boot up Death Stranding. With my TV's variable refresh rate monitor up, I can see the exact refresh rate as it hits the display. It maintains a locked 60 hertz the entire time, and I've got every setting maxed out in 4K, thanks to DLSS quality mode, of course. But gaming in HDR is something else, I gotta say. Cutscenes don't fluctuate, nor does the expansive open world gameplay, though to be fair, there's not too much going on here. Still, having locked 4K60 with all the bells and whistles enabled is pretty impressive. It almost feels too easy. Now, moving on to Doom Eternal, we don't have DLSS to help us, so this is completely maxed out in 4K, running at a locked 60 FPS to a G-Sync screen. And yes, also in glorious HDR. Part of my aim here, I don't usually use a controller for this, Nonetheless, it looks gorgeous. Again, the TV's refresh rate monitor never reported a drop in frame rate. Whoever gets this machine is gonna have a blast. Speaking of which, let's finally talk about those giveaways, shall we? Number one on our list is, of course, this very machine. The first place winner gets the computer we've built in this video. Powered by the i9-11900K, it can handle just about anything you throw at it. And as you can see here, it's been specced with some awesome hardware to go with it. Three more winners also get both the Gigabyte Z590 Aorus Pro AX motherboard we used here, along with an Intel i7-11700K. They're not whole systems, mind you, but they're an amazing starting point for your next PC build. To enter, all you have to do is tweet with the following message. You can also send an email to sweepstakes at bhphoto.com with the following subject and body text. We'll be posting the exact message in the video description below, where you can also find a link to the contest rules and details. So that's it for this in-depth look at the new 11th generation Intel processors. As always, it was a joy to build. And to the entrance, I wish you all the best of luck. I'm Doug with B&H, and I'll see you next time.